Welcome to Blueprint OT. In this video, we will learn how to install Postgres and PG Admin on your Mac. To get started, you want to look for Postgres for Mac on Google or whatever is your preferred browser. First result already hit the Postgres SQL.org is the official domain of Postgres Mac OS. That's what we want to do. And we want to download the installer here to make it the most easy for us. Don't be confused by redirected to EDB. That's all fine like it is. We have a choice of different operating systems and also on different versions. I will go just for the latest version for Mac OS. Hit download and wait a couple of seconds. I will choose to save it on my desktop. Hit save and there we go. After a couple of seconds we should be already fine. It's only 364 MB. So this will, depending on your internet speed, take everything between a couple of seconds and a couple of minutes. All right, we are done. There's no need to get involved in any of this in the background here. You can just close it. You don't even have to interact with the pop-up. You can just download it and you're done. Once you downloaded the package, you can just double click it and it will open the DMG file, which you can open here the actually install file or kick off the installation process. Obviously Mac will ask you if you trust the source because you randomly downloaded it from the internet and not through the official Apple App Store. But since we know it's a valid source, we go ahead. You have to enter your password and then you're good to go. And it's already starting the installation process, walking us through the installation step by step. So after the welcome message, we can choose the installation directory. I will go with the default. It's always more convenient to go with the default so you can be sure that the default settings are all referring to the right direction and the right place. Here you can actually choose what you want to install. You could also only install the Postgres SQL server, which is the actual database. PG admin 4 or PG4 admin, sometimes named differently, is basically only the user interface, only the human machine interface. So you have a nice desktop like user interface where you can click on stuff and no need to interact with the database directly via SQL commands. So this is quite convenient. So I would recommend you to install everything, even though if you're going to use your database itself only via machine interfaces. It's always good for debugging and setting everything up to have an HMI installed. So let's proceed with the installation of the SQL database Postgres and the graphical user interface PG admin and also to command line tool and stack builder. Again, we can choose the location where we want to store our data and I will go again with the default. So no need to change anything. We can set a password. This is very important because this is the password for your super user, the Postgres user. So it's a bit confusing in my opinion. Postgres is the name of the database. Postgres is also the default super user name. And it's also, by the way, the default database name itself. So the first database you create will be also called Postgres. So it's a lot of Postgres and a lot of confusion around here. But anyway, for the Postgres super user, make sure to remember this password, write it down somewhere. If you lose this password, you can basically trash your whole database. I will go with a pretty short one, easy to remember, because my database will be only for demonstration purposes or educational purposes. In case you want to store real data, make sure to have a proper password in place here. Obviously, your server needs to listen to a certain port. You can go with the default here, the 5432. With the advanced options, you can also just go with the default and there we go. We can hit next and kick off the process ready to install. Here we go. We'll take again a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on the computer you're running on. So this took me less than a minute as a reference. I'm on a MacBook Pro M1, so not the latest one anymore, but still obviously super powerful. So here we go, it's already installed. We get a little notification here that background items have been added. So there is some software added that can run in the background. So Apple again is just letting us know that we have something that may interact with our computer without us knowing because it's in the background, but that's perfectly fine. We did it on purpose. Since all this was packaged by EDB, they will ask us if we are okay with installing additional tools and stuff like this, 
but that's nothing I need for the moment. I like to keep it simple and have full control, but obviously that's your choice. Beside that, we are done. We can hit finish, close the installation stuff here, exit the actual disk or like yeah, the way Apple is doing it here. So we're really done with the installation and now we can just go ahead and start Postgres. To do so, we have to open the launch pad and I just put all the Postgres related stuff here on one sheet on one page for you that you can see what you have to expect. A bunch of stuff is installed. What you basically want to use is the PG admin 4. Again, that's the interface to interact with our database and that's exactly what we want to do. So it took me quite some time, about half a minute to a minute for the first start. But here we go. We are all set up and we can go ahead with our database. Obviously we get some notifications that we will get notifications, but it's fine for the moment. What I want to show you here, that's basically the PG admin interface. With this, I want to close this video for today. I hope you liked it. And in case you want to learn anything specific about Postgres or PG admin, please let me know down in the comments. Make sure to be subscribed for our next videos about Postgres and PG admin, where we're going to learn a bit more how to use PG admin, how to delete stuff, how to work with all the different menus we have, where we're also going to install Postgres on a Raspberry Pi and Windows. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you next time.